I'm Tony Hill, and you're listening to the Thousand Second Album. And I think you should check out My Morning Jackets, Touch Me, I'm Going to Scream, Part 2. Hi, I'm Jeff Stephen, and you're listening to the Thousand Second Album Podcast. This season, we'll be talking about must-hear songs, as I continue to ask people that are important to me all about the music that's important to them. Enjoy! Please welcome Tony Hill. Hi, Jeff. Thanks. Hey. <laughs> what a lovely introduction as oh, well. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, the song of choice today is My Morning Jacket, Touch Me, I'm mm. Going to Scream, Part 2. And yeah. can you tell me a bit about your introduction to, to the band, to My Morning Jacket? Mm. So I realize this goes back 20 years now, which is a long time to be into a band. And then I also realized I probably been to have been to other bands for 40 years as a result. <laughs> um, but it was like so many bands in a way fire a cd on a magazine uh called uncut and it was around the release of it still moves which was i think 2003 so yeah 20 years or 21 now <laughs> um and i really liked the song on there i don't think it was a mass plan something like that. it might have been one big holiday uh the one that's now you know they, they host an annual concert series as a result called that and I really liked it. And I went out and I bought It Still Moves. And I think at that time, you know, I would have been early 20s. I probably wasn't quite, it's funny with music, if, if you're not quite in the 100% right place for it to hit you, it doesn't always. But I liked it. Uh, and then a couple of years later, I think I heard something, I think it was Gideon. I know that much for sure. And I also realised last year that I've been mispronouncing the, the album's title, the just as long as it's been out by calling it Z. So I heard Gideon from Z because they're American. I'm guessing it's Z. And I was hooked and I went out and I got Z and that became just a massive album for me. And I was playing it almost nonsense, just shouting to people I knew, like, you got to chant it. And, you know, it's frustrating because, but, it, but when people don't get into it as much as you, but it also makes it something that bit more special to you because it's like, I fucking love this. And if you don't, I, that's fine, but this is something special for me. So by the time my wife and I started dating in, in 2008, I was already well underway of it. I had the t-shirt and all of this. And so when Evil Urges came out in 2008, she actually bought it for me, which is a wonderful thing. Um, you know, we'd been on holiday. We She lived in France at the time. We went uh, on holiday to Normandy. Ended up on what turned out to be Omaha Beach by pure chance and that sort of thing. And there's a a kind of like a, it's like a surf shop, beach community, like the, the tourist hut on the beach. And uh, I had that T-shirt on and the guy behind the counter in a very heavy, my morning jacket. You know, he was all excited just to see it. And so he started playing music on. But yeah, she bought me Evil Urges. And yeah, so I've been a fan since, I guess, since since finding Z or Z in 2005. And since then, yeah. And Evil Urges, I think, is, is fair to say, is probably one of the most divisive albums they've ever done <laughs> because there's so much of a a left turn in so much of the music if you go back and you you can find clues throughout the discography leading to it so it's not that severe but you know if you if you were into z and really digging things like any time and and gideon and it it beats for you and then you hear highly suspicious it's like what the f what is this you know are they are they are they are they trying to do a prince impression are they trying to be like bootsy collins or something but the video for touch me i'm going to scream part two came out and i think it's got like a slow loris or something it's this really cool little animated video and i think there's just something about it that immediately kind of sort of connected for both my wife and i and it almost became just something we both kind of gelled over on it um and it's remained a favorite since then really i think even my son he he enjoys it and when when the two of us went to, we finally got to see them live when they hit London last year. He wanted to go as well, but you know, you can't really take a 10 year old into that sort of place. <laughs> oh, that's fun. And, it's, and uh, I think I would have made the same mistake in, uh, where, where I, where I'm from, we would call it Zed as well. So. Yeah, exactly. It, it just feels natural for me. And I still call it Zed, you know, but, yeah. and the, uh, I'm quite pleased uh, you chose this tune too, because they're, uh, when I went through that thousand one albums, you must hear book, the version I had cut off in 2005. 
Really? And so, yeah. So, so I feel like I've sort of scratched the surface of 1955 to 2005 now, but the, what's happened since then, I'm still, I've been relatively oblivious to. So this was a, my morning jacket was a name that I had heard, but mm. I hadn't really put the face to the name or the song to the artist at all. But what was, uh, what was neat about the past uh, month or so is that multiple friends suggested this very song really? as as oh, one wow. of the ones that they they had in their sort of the the top few of the the song that thou shalt hear and so when it happened not once not twice but uh thrice i thought i am really intrigued by this song now and uh <laughs> so <great>. yeah <laughs> so it's been uh fun to explore over the last uh, little while so the the song itself the the, yeah. uh from evil urges what is it that mm. appeals to you uh particularly about uh touch me i'm gonna scream part two I think I've always been a fan of songs for that build, you know, songs for, and you know, it, you you can look at them in in so many genres. You could you know from incident, uh, sorry, from New York New York City Serenade on um, uh, the Wild the Innocent and the East Street Shuffle. You know, it starts off with little bits and builds up into this big spectacular thing. And I guess it's it's something I love about post rock as well, and. I think I just love the way it starts. You've got like a minute, almost two minutes of just a disco beat, which in itself is relatively an implausible idea of, of starting a My Morning Jacket song that ends like it does with just a disco beat on the drums, you know, Jim James with his Omnichord and these sort of admittedly really lush sort of Fender Rhodes chords. And then bit by bit, it just builds into this really kind of compelling chugging almost pink floyd like space rock type thing and it just builds to this sort of cathartic release and and again it, it, there's, there's a parallel there of a lot of uh, the sort of post rock stuff i like as well but it just it really builds in something spectacular and i think in a way it's uh, just just thinking back to you, you were talking about sequencing i think on on one of your last ones and i think it by putting it at the end of this album that's where they know they've taken lots of left turns, it somehow ties together almost every element of what they've done to date in one eight minute opus. You know, it's got the hints of the left field and the funk stuff with the disco beat that they've done. But, you know, just before the five minute mark, those guitars come grinding in and it just turns into something that would just as easily be at home on Zed, as well as uh, their previous few albums as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, that's totally right. Where that at the beginning of the song, I even scribbled down. It's almost like a little video game music at the yeah. beginning. Yeah, yeah, which is just again, I and not being too familiar with their catalog, I could see how that would be a left turn if people were expecting <laughs> it to yeah. sound more like the guitars at the five minute mark. That that would definitely yep. sound very out of sync with what they <laughs> might have been uh, anticipating on the album. <laughs> And the um, the uh, the lyrics themselves. Is there anything that uh, particularly struck you about the the words on the song? So the lyrics are relatively straightforward and repetitive. You know, there's not they're not like it's not like a big story song, but I feel like they're almost euphoric. If you take them at face value, I think it's like a celebration about human connection. You know, and just that th this feeling is wonderful. What a what a great reprise, the way he sings that as well. This feeling is wonderful. Don't you ever turn it off. It could be all kinds of things, you know. It could be, yeah, it was 2008. It was that tedious time in American politics. There could be a few references in there about it, some of the things he's saying in there. There could be some sexual metaphors in there. It could be all kinds of things. But it's just such a joyous feeling to it all. Yeah. I think that's what I love. And the way it builds to just this, this really just, it just, just for yeah, this this feeling is wonderful, and the, but no one can can say oh or sing oh like Jim James when he's in no. full <laughs> full bloom as it were. <laughs> no, and the I really like the the lyric early on where he says it's been so long since someone challenged me. I know, yeah. I love that. Yeah, and that's sort of it fits with, like with your idea with the the connection too, where even though it's from two thousand eight, it feels like that could be extremely relevant now. Where if mm. if, if you think online, if people are finding themselves in sort of bubbles and the idea of maybe somebody, you know, challenging something you, uh, you just always assumed was correct. And you start to see things in a new perspective. It felt like 
he might have anticipated that by 15 years or so with yeah. that lyric. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, if we thought it was tricky then. <laughs> God, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> narratively now, that was easy sailing. <laughs> that's right. And the uh, and you're totally right with the the build too. And I realized um something that that really uh I find really appealing with songs is where there's little details that sort of take things up uh, a notch or two and what's mm. the the drummer is it patrick callahan is the drummer of the group yeah yeah and so yeah. when he uh like i think it's in the the end of the second chorus he opens up the the hi-hat and there's, there's there's a real sense of urgency that kicks in at that point which yeah is brilliant. yeah and you know like like so many bands for the you know I don't want to sound dismissive when I say not real bands, you know, band bands that are, are playing their own instruments and what have you and, and mm. take it on the road. Their, their live thing is so much different. And I don't think, I think, so it was the first time I'd got to see them because they hadn't been to the UK for some time. And he is an absolute beast on the drums live. It's, it's more than I was expecting, you know, you go to a show, you haven't been for a while and a thump, 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 but that, yeah, he's an absolute monster on the drums. And it's almost like the crowd are anticipating that moment where he bursts through and you half expect, much like uh, the start of when the levee breaks and it yes. sounds like John Bonham's kit's falling down the stairs while he's playing it. You half expect his kit to be flying off his feet and his arms somehow. And he's he's a big chap as well. He really is. But yeah, he's he's phenomenal on the drums, and he, yeah, going back to that, this feeling is wonderful as well. And there's a sort of because he's not playing the guitar in the piece, Jim's playing this this omnichord that he wears around his neck. He liberated from the constraints of playing the guitar. <laughs> he sort of walks the stage like like a preacher, and he's reaching out, and it's just yeah, it's just this. It, it really is. It's almost like a big cathartic community sing-along yeah. and it was yeah i think we were both very excited but they, they slipped that one into the encore i was just having saying, played like... yeah they, well, they played part one earlier in the night yes. and we thought well that's it we're not going to get part two as well <laughs> they don't normally i don't think they do both in the same night do they yeah. um so yeah when they brought that on as as the, the penultimate tra song of the night that was uh, a magic moment for everyone i think uh, especially when it's the surprise and the encore too. Yeah. Where, <laughs> oh, that's wonderful! It, yeah, it isn't the kind of song you can just sneak in mid set or that sort of no. thing. It's just, <laughs> the sequencing can... matters here too. Yeah, and and you know they they never met a, a five minute song they couldn't turn into fifteen, and and so if you take it an eight minute song and putting it live, it was a real uh, real event. Yeah, <laughs> that's fantastic. The um yes, so the uh, so it sounds like I do I must hear them live at some point as well, <laughs> which is yeah which yeah is well they're, they're all always on the road it seems so yeah. yeah i think they probably play canada a lot more than they play europe <laughs> okay that's good to know and the um so in addition to hearing them live what is it about uh this particular track of, of all their catalog what does it make that makes a uh, part two the the must hear i think just because it is that encapsulation of so much of what's great about their sound it is that the joyous element of it that you get from wordless chorus on Z. It's the it, it's Jim James's kind of all embracing love lyric, as it were. But you know, everything this, this feeling is wonderful. And, it, and like I say, it, but but in the same way, it is his kind of. There's a bit of mystique. There's a bit of something he's trying to say in there that you've got to try and that does make you know, like you say. It's been so long since someone challenged me. Oh, what what what. Yeah. But um and again, yeah, it's the band are really, really tight and it just chugs along with a, a real kind of real kind of rhythm and force. It just makes it a real joy to listen to, I think. Yeah. And it's uh I quite like the the part two as well, because growing up I remember sequels got a, a really bad name. It felt like the cash grabs or the direct to videos or that sort yeah. of thing. But here the like the 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 part touch me. I'm going to scream part one appears it's early in the album, maybe the second track or so. On yeah. Evil Urges. And it's good. Like it, it was totally listenable and enjoyable, but this one seemed to have a real depth to it that uh, it, it's the, the scribble I made was, uh, did you ever see the, the Christopher Nolan Batman movies, how like Batman begins was, was good, but then the dark Knight just added that extra level of depth and uh, yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. 
it's yeah it's it's the good sequel it's the godfather part two yes <laughs> it's yeah because i mean yeah i mean if i'm being honest the first time i heard evil urges i was like Oof. Yeah, I, I was I, okay. Let's let's move on. Let's move on. And nothing really. There were a few things that caught me. You know, Aluminium Park caught me, or Aluminum Park, sorry, yeah. <laughs> uh, caught my attention. You know, Librarian caught me because of it. It's got this really wistful sort of lyric to it, and things like that. Set walking to a certain extent, but it but there is something like there's something more substantial. There's more of a hook, and it, it just felt so much more of a meaty song that it, it felt like it was the album was almost building up to that point yeah and the um the album itself i wrote down the word eclectic to describe it because it yeah, yeah it just <laughs> <laughs> the one uh you mentioned highly suspicious it uh it sort of took me in the direction of uh the cameo from the 1980s his song word up and then uh yeah the sec walking that's one i think it had some nice pedal steel in there too mm, so mm. yeah it really is all over the map so if this tune it is. brings it all together then <laughs> yeah but they, okay. it, i think a lot of it really did prove divisive i think they kind of walked it back a bit on that sort of side when when circuital came out a few years later they, they kind of walked it back a bit more much like you know radiohead with hail to the thief they were kind of almost walking it back to try and say okay we've we've experimented we've pushed it quite far let's uh okay we get it you don't quite like the funk as much as you like the rock but i guess there is the saying the uh the true greats are always polarizing as well so if yeah, this, if, the, yeah. Yeah, if this one yeah. divided the audiences then maybe that means it's <laughs> it's up there for sure it is yeah and i've got i mean yeah i mean it's nearly so it's 2008 so that's i should know this by heart really so that's a good so we're now 2024 so so this year it will be Ooh, my maps are celebrating it's absolutely sweet, gone. It's sweet 16 this year. <laughs> there you go. See, so yeah, some quick maps. <laughs> uh, but and and within that time, I think I've I've grown to enjoy a lot more about it than I did at least for the first few years. Because I think aside from Touch Me, I'm gonna screen part two, I didn't listen to a lot of it. And then it would be like I'd I'd hear aluminum park aluminium park or aluminum park on a shuffle <laughs> Zazzy, or something you know? <laughs> yeah exactly yeah i'd hear it on shuffle and i go was that on evil urges really and i'd, I'd go back and I'd listen to it but but still highly suspicious i still can't quite no. <laughs> <laughs> i think yeah every band will have those tracks where yeah. uh like pearl jam uh they they've released some great stuff but i'm still not quite ready for their song bugs and so one day maybe <laughs> Well, I have my theory on bugs and things like that, you know, yeah. <laughs> um, in, in as much, I think, you know, if if it was during their whole era of saying no. Yes. And I think if you look at the, the, the song after Solid Song on Vitalogy, yeah. maybe they put those little things in there to kind of stop it being insanely huge. Yes. So it's like a little bit of, well, we'll put bugs on here so people yeah. don't think it's all killer. <laughs> That's, <right. laughs> That's true. That's if, true. Uh, if you follow, like, I think, Better Man's a couple songs later. And so if you have exactly. Better you've Man's got Better Man, you've got, nothing, you've got all of that stuff on there. <laughs> and then it'll be like, well, if we do this, we're just going to be all over MTV again. You yeah. know? <laughs> and we can't be that approachable. <laughs> so, no. Yeah, I don't, I don't think many are on board with bugs or, uh, <laughs> or stupid mop, et cetera. But yeah. <laughs> One day, perhaps. But, uh, that's, uh, but that's great. No, and the, um, yeah, I, I was really pleased to, uh, you chose this one as now um, I've got a taste of the group and so I'm keen to, to see where else they've gone uh, over the years from there. Well, they, they went a little further afield. I think the Waterfall and the Waterfall 2 were a bit, I think they've admitted they weren't quite committed as a band anymore. And we're kind of looking maybe at splitting up and ending it, but they've reaffirmed themselves since. So it's uh, hopefully next steps are going to be golden too. <laughs> that sounds promising. Well, a, a huge thank you for coming today, Tony, and uh, until the next time. Thank you very much, Jeff. It's been an absolute pleasure. Take care. Take care, Jeff. Cheers. This has been the Thousand Second Album Podcast. Thanks for sharing some of your time, energy, and attention with us today. Take care.